Good morning and welcome to today's worship coming to you on location from Radcliffe and Stand URC. We all have a vision and a plan for our lives. The Mayor, Andy Burnham, he has a plan for Manchester. Our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, he has a vision for the UK and maybe the two don't meet. But God has a vision and his hope is his vision becomes our vision. So let's come together for our first song, a wonderful classic, Be Thou My Vision. For the last number of weeks, I have been going around some of the churches in the Mission Partnership talking about prayer and maybe I've had the benefit of meeting with some of you already. But during this time, we've considered some of the following. Firstly, I believe that prayer is amongst the highest of the spiritual gifts that God gives us. And I've stuck my neck out a bit and actually consider prayer is more important than preaching. The irony is, most of the churches I've told that to, they agree with me, and so maybe I need to start looking for a new job. But until then, let's carry on. And the second thing of prayer is that prayer is the resource that God uses to pull down spiritual blessings. We can use prayer to open up the storehouse of heaven and to find the resources that we need for our churches and for our Christian lives. And the third thing is that prayer is like a pilgrimage, like an odyssey, which takes us into the heart of God. We can, we can do this through short prayers, but the cumulative effect is that over time we get the impression that prayer is actually a bit of a marathon. 
but it's a walk, it is a journey that we don't take alone. It is a journey that God invites us to take with the company of the Holy Spirit. Let's come to God in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that we can bring all of our anxieties, concerns and prayers to you. Nothing is off the table when we can come to our Father in heaven. But prayer is more. It's not just about praying for our nearest and dearest. Prayer is like a fight. Prayer is like a wrestling match where we engage in mortal combat on behalf of a needy world. Through the Holy Spirit, help us to discern and work out how you want us to pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. COVID-19 is a new bug that has caught us completely unawares. One small little bug has turned our world upside down. And it feels like at the moment, we're trying to run up to keep up with it. It feels that we are in the shadows. We're being forced into isolation, forced to stop meeting as communities, and forced to stay away from places where we like to socialize. It definitely feels that we have been pushed into the shadows. Sometime, hopefully we'll get a vaccine. That day's not yet here, but let's hope and pray for that day to arrive soon. So now we're going to have a small little quiz to just remind us how we got here. Question number one. What has pop star Pink, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, actor and former wrestler Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and Rita Wilson, who is married to Tom Hanks, what do they all have in common? Question two, who instigated the clapping on Thursdays at eight o'clock during the first lockdown? Question three, what did Captain Ton Moore famously do on his 99th birthday? And let's have our answers. Our first question, the answer is, all tested positive with COVID-19 symptoms. An answer to question number two is, Anne-Marie Plass instigated the round of clapping for the NHS and key workers on Thursdays at 8 o'clock. And the answer to number three, Captain Tom Moore completed 100 laps of his garden, raising money for the NHS. God's Story, Jacob Wrestles. So part of God's story is about the time a guy named Jacob wrestled with a stranger. And it begins like this. Jacob grew up with a big, tough, hairy twin brother named Esau. Because Esau was the firstborn, he was supposed to get a special blessing. But Jacob was tricky, and with the help of his mom, wound up getting the blessing for himself. This made Esau furious, so Jacob ran away. A few years later, God told Jacob to return home, where Esau still lived. But Jacob was a little worried. He had heard that Esau was headed toward him with 400 men. Either Esau had a lot of friends, or he was bringing an army. So Jacob sent messengers ahead with gifts. Hopefully, if Esau was still angry with him, the gifts would calm him down. While Jacob was traveling, he stopped by a river. Now, God hadn't asked Jacob to stop. He stopped because he was afraid. He sent his family and servants and everything he owned across the river. Then he waited, alone crying out to God in frustration. Jacob knew God had promised to be with him, but he was terrified. Suddenly, a man came into the camp out of nowhere and began to wrestle Jacob. Jacob fought back, and this was a knockdown, drag out title fight. All night, neither one of these fighters backed down. In fact, they wrestled for so long that the sun started to come up. When the stranger saw that Jacob 
wasn't going to give up, he touched Jacob's hip, and that simple touch pulled Jacob's hip out of socket, causing him to limp. Then the man said, let me go. But Jacob knew there was something special about this guy. So he said, I won't let you go unless you bless me. The stranger stopped fighting and gave Jacob a new name. He said, your name will no longer be Jacob. From now on, you will be called Israel because you fought with God and with men and have won. See, the name Israel actually means God fights. Kids, that means that Jacob had been wrestling all night with God. Anyway, right after that, the stranger did bless Jacob. But the best part is, Jacob knew he had seen God face to face, and that changed him. Not only did Jacob get a new name, but he was no longer a fearful man running away from his own brother. In fact, when the stranger left, Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming. This time, he ran to Esau, kissed him, and gave him gifts just because he loved him. Jacob realized that he could obey God no matter how scared he felt. He could trust that God would always keep his promises. And that's the story of Jacob wrestling with God. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God told Jacob to go home. That meant seeing his brother Esau. Jacob made camp near a river alone. He was terrified. A stranger came and wrestled him. They fought until dawn. The stranger touched Jacob's hip. The wrestling match was over. Jacob asked for a blessing. He got a new name first. It was Israel. The stranger was God. Jacob went to meet Esau. He trusted God. And that's a part of God's story. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go, unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Who is this mystery assailant who's trying to beat up Jacob? Is he some sort of angelic ninja? Let's find out more. says that you can only get to know someone by fighting with them. And as we're going to find out, Jacob starts to discover who his mystery assailant is in the very act of fighting. Initially, Jacob asks the mystery assailant what his name is. But the mystery mugger refuses to answer the question. However, there are some clues to help us to find out who he is. Firstly, the fact that the assailant's name is not revealed is a clue in itself. In the times of the Old Testament, 
it was often regarded as taboo to mention the name of God. Instead, titles were used, such as Adonai, which means the Lord. God, it seems, is a bit of a mystery. Secondly, the mystery adversary gives Jacob a new name. Israel, which means to struggle with God. When we put these two clues together, it seems the mystery is solved. Jacob has been wrestling with God. Brilliant. Problem solved. Let's go home and put the kettle on. Ah, wait a minute. There's more to this mystery than meets the eye. The nature of God's identity ha has to be shrouded in mystery to a degree. In a previous encounter, Moses had asked God to see his true face. All that Moses would, was able to see was God's back as God passed him by. It seems that due to the nature of God's holiness, if we get close to him, we could be burnt in some way. But in this encounter with Jacob, Jacob apparently sees God face to face and survives. Jacob is so shocked to have wrestled with God. He names the place where they wrestle Peniel. And Peniel means to have wrestled with God, to have seen him face to face and survived. So you could call Peniel a bit like a Bronze Age squared circle, a wrestling ring to battle with the Almighty. Now, as a kid, I used to love watching wrestling on Saturday afternoons on ITV, and I really enjoyed Big Daddy and Giant Haystacks fighting each other. And what I liked especially was seeing the occasional masked wrestler being unmasked live on TV. And to a degree, you could say that God is like a masked wrestler. However, he's not wearing a mask always out of choice. The problem is one of human making. We don't like to talk about God much. We don't like to think about him. Most debate is usually about the fact that God doesn't exist and we are in charge of our own world. We have pushed God into the shadows. But the whole story of the Bible is God coming out of the shadows. God refuses to remain a complete mystery. We are going to see his face and we will hear his name. What has this got to do with prayer? We will come to that shortly.
What about now? Is God back in the shadows? Many churches are closed. Those churches that are open have got very strict rules about social adherence and stuff. And those who do come to worship, well, they look like masked wrestlers. And John Bradbury, our General Secretary, makes the point that the, our denomination has been in quiet decline since its inception in the early 1970s. And now with COVID on top of everything, what is going on? Is God back in the shadows? But maybe it's us who are in the shadows. Maybe God's still out there in broad daylight working in people's lives. I would suggest using a pattern of prayer which calls upon some of the things that God has told us about himself. We're told that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. We're encouraged to love God, our neighbour and ourselves. We are reminded that three great things should, would last forever. Faith, Hope and love, the greatest of these being love. These triplets appear many times in the New Testament and they're almost like an echo. They're reminding us of something of the threefold nature of God. God as Father, God as Son and God as Holy Spirit. God is multidimensional, and for us who live in a three-dimensional world, understanding God is very difficult. And the Trinitarian nature of God, it took hundreds of years for our church ancestors to come up with a theological way of grappling with this. It's kind of crazy, really. God who's eternal comes into our limited three-dimensional world in three personalities. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Firstly, there is God the Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He saw us mess up the world and simply declared, this ain't going on. To slightly, to slightly twist the words of the Lord's Prayer, he decided, my kingdom come, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Secondly, we have Jesus, the Son of God. There at the creation of the world, whose very fingers were on all of the atoms, being sparked into existence. He comes back to planet earth to wear human skin to announce God the Father's intention that his reign is starting again. Jesus knows full well that human nature is corrupt and broken and we like to stay in the shadows. But he declares the light of God and calls us out of the shadow land we live in. Thirdly, we have the Holy Spirit, the often forgotten and masked member of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. God's presence with Jesus gone back to heaven. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God which brings air to our lungs. It is the Holy Spirit who calls us to bring, who calls us to come back to God. Now there's one final interesting part of the story of Jacob wrestling with God. God gave Jacob a new name, the name of Israel. And this prayerful wrestling changed Jacob. It became, he became a new person. 
It took him to a new place. And this is what prayer does with us. It's as if this prayerful wrestling draws us out of the shadows, draws us towards God. It takes the mask that we might be wearing off to reveal who God wants us to be. But it's in a time particularly now, when we're trying to work out who are we? What are we supposed to do? What is our future? God calls us to pray now. So during the, the month of November, we asked that the churches of the Rochdale, Bury, and North Manchester Missional Partnership come together in prayer. And the prayer is just simple. We're praying for our future direction. We need God's guidance. We ask that churches who meet together as congregations pray every Sunday. We ask that any midweek groups will be prepared to pray when they meet. We ask for anyone who's watching online or is shielding safely at home to join us in these prayers too. The prayer that we use is very simple. It follows the pattern of the Trinity. It reminds us of who God is and how God intends to respond. Please join me as we come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, thank you that you desire to have a deep relationship with us. You don't want to be like a stranger. You refuse to stay in the shadows. Father Almighty, maker of the heavens and the earth, set your kingdom in our midst. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, the sinner. Holy Spirit, breath of the living God, renew me, the church, and all the world. Amen. As we continue our time of prayer, we come to our communion in the service. Prayer isn't just spiritual, it is practical and physical too. We can take everyday objects and tasks and put them to prayerful activity. Hoovering, walking, dusting. And Jesus takes everyday objects like bread and wine to remind us that we are united with heaven. We invite people at home to join in this communion with your own bread and wine. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Physical objects can tell a story. Physical activity can be a prayer. The bread tells us of Jesus Christ, who gave his body to rescue us. Eat this to come close to Jesus in friendship. We are invited to take a glass of wine. This is the blood of Christ, making a new covenant, a new promise for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it, all of you, to come close to Jesus in friendship. Light of the world is 
comes in just to, to uh, help me pack up. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May he be, gra may he be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance to you and give you peace. Let's have a look through another of the school doors today, perhaps this goldfish door. On behalf of children of Kiribati, I am delighted to convey word of gratitude to all teachers in Kiribati for their hard work in teaching us your passion enlightened our learning journey so that we are able to understand a lot of concepts and skills. We become knowledgeable children and in the future we will make use of these concepts and skills in real life and become useful and fruitful. We are grateful for all your continuous assistance in supporting us in our learning during COVID-19 lockdown. You taught us how to avoid COVID-19 using these steps. Always wash your hands with water and soap and distancing 2 meters from your friend. Teachers, you are light shining light onto our learning pathway in reaching our full potential. Thank you very much. And the project total to date is £833.